Hello, y'all. I'm gonna try something different today. I don't know if you ever heard of the screw tape letters. They're one of C.S. Lewis's books. And I've been reading it here and there, but I came across this chapter that uh, was interesting. They're all interesting, but I can see how it pertains to today's obsession with diet and exercise and stuff. So, screw tape letters, if you don't know what it is, it is a collection of letters that the devil is writing to one of his um, underlings in the field that's assigned to a person. So just like we have guardian angels, the devil has his own little minions out there trying to cause us problems and lead us off the path to God, which in this book he refers to as the enemy. And Wormwood is his nephew, you know, the, the fictional characters, but Wormwood is his nephew assigned to this particular guy. And in this case, he's telling Wormwood about gluttony, but it's in a way that you wouldn't think. Let me turn this down. It's so hot today. My dear Wormwood, the contemptuous way in which you spoke of gluttony as a means of catching souls in your last letter shows only your ignorance. One of the great achievements of the last hundred years has been to deaden the human conscience on that subject so that by now you will hardly find a sermon preached or a conscience troubled about it in the whole length and breadth of Europe. This has largely been effected by concentrating all our efforts on gluttony of delicacy, not gluttony of excess. Your patient's mother, as I learned from the dossier, and you might have learned from Glubos, is a good example. She would be astonished one day, I hope, will be to learn that her whole life is enslaved to this kind of sensuality which is quite concealed from her by the fact that the quantities involved are small. But what do quantities matter provided we can use a human belly and palate to produce querulousness, impatience, uncharitableness, and self-concern? Glubos has this old woman well in hand. See, Glubos is assigned to the, the dude's mother that screw tape is assigned to. She is a positive terror to hostesses and servants. She's always turning from what has been offered her to say with a demure sigh and little smile, oh, please, please, all I want is a cup of tea a week, but not too weak, and the teeniest, weeniest bit of really crisp toast. You see, because what she wants is smaller and less costly than what has been set before her. She never recognizes as gluttony her determination to get what she wants, however troublesome it may be to others. At the very moment of indulging her appetite, she believes that she is practicing temperance. In a crowded restaurant, she gives a little scream at the plate, which seems some overworked waitress has set before her and says, oh, that's far too much. Take it away and bring me about a quarter of it. If challenged, she would say she was going doing this to avoid waste. In reality, she does it because the particular shade of delicacy to which we have enslaved her is offended by the sight of more food than she happens to want. The real value of the quiet, unobtrusive work which Glubos has been doing for years on this old woman can be gauged by the way in which her belly now dominates her whole life. The woman is in what may be called the all I want state of mind. All she wants is a cup of tea properly made or an egg properly boiled or a slice of bread properly toasted. But she never finds any servant or any friend who can do these simple things properly because her properly conceals an insatiable demand for the exact and almost impossible palatal pleasures which she imagines she remembers from the past. A past described by her, by her as the days when you could get good servants but known to us as the days when her senses were more easily pleased and she had pleasures of other kinds which made her less depending on those at the, on the table. Meanwhile, the daily disappointment produces daily ill temper. Cooks give notice and friendships are cooled. If ever the enemy introduces, and he's referring to God, this the enemy, introduces into her mind a faint suspicion that she is too interested in food. Lubos counters it by suggesting to her that she doesn't mind what she eats herself, but does like to have things nice for her boy. In fact, of course, her greed has been one of the chief sources of his domestic discomfort for many years. Now, your patient is his mother's son. 
While working your hardest quite rightly on other fronts, you must not neglect a little quiet infiltration in respect of gluttony. Being a male, he is not so likely to be caught by the all-I-want camouflage. Males are best turned into gluttons with the help of their vanity. They ought to be made to think themselves very knowing about food, to pique themselves on having found the only restaurant in town where steaks are really properly cooked. What begins as vanity can then be gradually turned into habit. But however you approach it, the great thing is to bring him into the state in which he's a denial of any one indulgence. It matters not which champagne or tea, sole corbeer, which is a fancy fish dish, or cigarettes, puts him out, for then his charity, justice, and obedience are all at your mercy. Mere excess in food is much less valuable than delicacy. Its chief use is as a kind of artillery preparation for attacks on chastity. On that, as on every other subject, keep your man in a condition of false spirituality. Never let him notice the medical aspect. Keep him wondering what pride or lack of faith has delivered him into your hands. When a simple inquiry into what he has been eating or drinking for the last 24 hours would show him whence your ammunition comes and thus enable him by a very little abstinence to imperil your lines of communication. If he must think of the medical side of chastity, Feed him the grand lie which we have made the English humans believe, that physical exercise in excess and consequent fatigue are specially favorable to this virtue. How they can believe this in the face of the notorious lustfulness of sailors and soldiers may well be asked, but we used the schoolmasters to put the story about men who were really inter interested in chastity as an excuse for games and therefore recommended games as an aid to chastity. But the, the whole business is too large to deal with at the tail end of the letter. Your affectionate uncle, Screwtape. And that's the name that he, the devil is using here. So I look at this and I, I think of even myself. I'm including myself in this because I was obsessed with jogging a couple of years ago. And I jog quite a bit to the point of tiredness. And I was using it as also a way to cope with something going on in my life. Now, I've gotten back a little into exercise, but it's not my domineering focus. But you can get caught up in how many steps you took. Some people get caught up in what kind of food they're eating, what kind of diet they're on. Is it keto? Is it carnivore? Is it vegan? Until you don't even realize that you have to, it's almost become an idol. And for some people, it is an idol. Some people know, but it can become an idol. Oh, you know, you got to eat this way. You got to do this much. You get so in a in a knot or your panties in a twist if you don't do this many steps or this much walking or jogging or gym workouts this week when you don't even realize that that is taking you away from focusing on what is really important in this life because all them steps ain't getting you into heaven and I'm not saying that people that are saved are going to go to hell because they're focused on their steps. No, what I'm saying is it takes you away from what your goal is. And your goal is not so much this body that's going to perish no matter what until we are resurrected. But your focus is on leading others to Christ. And if, and there's exercise is important to stay healthy. So you can be in eating right, you know, last longer, to lead others to Christ because the opposite can be true. You can eat junk all day long because you're depressed or whatever because I've sat there with a gallon of ice cream. And instead of talking to God about my problems, well, I might have whined to him during the eating of the ice cream. I ate the ice cream. That's been a long time. I don't do that anymore. But you, you see what I'm saying. It can go either way. So if you're focusing too much on what you're eating, how much you're eating, how much you're exercising, until you don't even, it, it's a, a form of gluttony. It's just not the form that you expect. Therefore, the devil can use it against you because you have no idea. He is so sneaky. All right, got to get going. Love y'all.